Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, today I think I want to take a little bit of time and do a better assessment on this engine that I picked up in a horde of uh, five other engines in a VW Bug. Uh, we tried to get it run on the last time. We got it popping and farting and coughing and doing that kind of thing. We never really got it to stay running, so I figured we'll try it again. The last thing that we kind of let, ended off with was the carburetor was frozen up. All the linkages were frozen. The choke was frozen. Nothing kind of moved. Everything is um, pretty chalky in its positions. So I know the carb is pretty beat, but I, before we get to that point, I want to go pop the valve covers off of it, look at see what we have. This might be a motor that has a little bit more in it than uh, meets the eye, but I just don't know any history on it. So we go pop the valve covers off. We'll adjust the valves. We'll do a compression test and kind of give a, a what for on this and see what we have. And uh, turn the camera on, take you guys along with me. One thing I want to do is throw the other J-tube on. There's one on this side. I think the last thing this engine was being, was getting done on this engine was exhaust changeover because those pieces are new. And I noticed it's got a broken stud on there. And I think it kind of stopped at that point. And it was probably in a doom buggy looking by the general setup that is on it. So let me uh, get you in a stand and we'll get into it. Let's flip that up. I figure we'll pop a valve cover off. And that should really kind of tell us if there's anything special done to it, where it's got standard setup or not. That is looking pretty standard to me. I don't see anything fancy. They do look fairly clean. Not a bunch of crud built up in them. That's not bad. So I'd say those heads are fairly recent. It's not like a motor that has 80,000 miles on it. It has a bunch of, you know, baked on crud on the inside of it. It's got a thermostat still in it. Thermostat looks like it's good. It's retracted. All right, so I'm going to go pop the plugs out and uh, we'll do a valve adjustment. It's already set up on number one. Go from there. So I have to go pull the plugs out. One thing I already noticed right away is it's running two different types of spark plugs. One with the tip on it and one without. So it's already got kind of a meatball that's kind of goofy situation happening. You know what I mean by that? I get the plugs out, I'll show you. So the rotor's pointing at that line on the body of the distributor right there, and that is number one cylinder. So because if you go backwards, it's one, two, three, four. It makes it easy to remember. So you just rotate it so that the rotor points at each one of those cylinders when you adjust the valves, and you should be all set to go. Unless the timing was ridiculously out, but uh, uh, no reason to suspect it. That should be the issue here. There's the plugs, how they came out, and that's what I'm talking about. One of them has a different plug wire on the end compared to the normally ratchety style. That one's bent. Isn't it bent? Yeah, that one's bent. That doesn't make for a good plug, now does it? Anyway. We're gonna go throw those in for now. These are the better setup too. This is the original like Bosch plug and wire setup. It kind of ratchets and hold on, holds onto it because on a VW, it's cooled by air and through the plug location. So this is the fan right here. You have plugs that go in and they have like a boot over the top of it. Well, that boot gets pushed in over the plug, but air is trying to push that plug wire off a lot. So the plug with the first style that I showed you is much better than the, uh, Standard that everybody's used to now. Let's go see number one valve adjustment looks like. Both well, loose, that's a good sign. This is a six thou shim. They're both a little on the loose side. So we are gonna go around and just adjust all the valves just like this. And then we'll come back and do a compression test. Okay. Maybe do a hair on that one too.
That might be too tight. Nope. That's good. Once in a while you flip the feel gauge over too, you can get the curl out of your feel gauge. Work it the other way. A couple of times. On to the next cylinder. And the plugs are out of the engine, so you can just turn it by hand. So I'm gonna turn that quarter of the way around. Or 90 degrees. We'll do the next cylinder and so on all the way around for the all four cylinders all the valves are adjusted number four was really loose they were all loose but four was really loose so i figure we'll go now and we can do ourselves a compression test so i got the gauge set up on number one cylinder and then just the jumper pack to spin it should spin fairly easy because there's no plugs in it and i do have the this big bolt here holding the throttle open and then holding the choke open so air can flow in fairly decent guys are picking on me on my last video that I'm gonna burn up a screwdriver I don't think that screwdriver was long for this world <laughs> it's a sacrificial lamp I do have a starter button it's just that it's on the fastback underneath it and I don't feel like going and go get it so let's see now this would be right there that's the lead coming from your battery to the starter and this tab right here is the wire coming down from your ignition switch that would put power to there to make it crank but if you just jump the two it'll also spin the starter i gotta change the gauge the gauge isn't holding pressure yeah, let's try that again yeah it's a little weak i want to say what is that 75 80 looks like 85 pounds right around there Let's get done doing all four. First one we had was 85 pounds, 75 pounds, 40 pounds, and 80 pounds. That is not good. That's pretty low. I would say you start getting about 90 psi below 90 psi is uh, shown to be pretty wore out. But this engine has sat for a long period of time, and it may come back up after it runs a little bit after the the uh, edges of the valves that have rust and stuff on them kind of breaks away a little bit and seals a little is it may come up so we're going to continue on we're still going to try to get it running we're going to quickly pop the top of that carburetor off i have a feeling this carburetor is probably going to be pretty rough but with this uh engine and the other engines came eight other carburetors so we may just go steal one of those to uh, fill the float bowl up and try running it but before we get there let's take the top of this one off and see what we got got the screws out of the top of that Definitely see the fuel that I put in it did not go from the carburetor into the engine. Probably because the, the jets are all boogered up. Try not to take out the gasket. turkey baster take that out of there but I think um, we got no accelerator pump we're going to see fuel squirt out of here and we have nothing so the diaphragm is probably shot and I do see a bunch of crud in the bottom of it so let me go see what we got what else we have for carburetors and we'll just pop it on it's two bolts not that big of a deal Yeah, the bottom of that carb was uh, the jet sits right in the very bottom. And it has a ton of sludge sitting right in front of that. I don't know if you guys can see, let me get something to poke at it with. That it's not do good for fuel to go through. <laughs> now, this one will definitely need a update with the ultrasonic cleaner. I had one other pick 34 basically the the newer the engines and the larger the engines the larger the carb got to in the intake so you can't take a, like a 30 or, or 28 the bolt pattern is wider they do make adapters but 
it's beyond the scope of this right now. We're trying to put something on that or run. So let's go see what this guy looks like inside. And if it's better, we'll go with this. If not, we'll have to clean the one, one of them. It ain't great, but it's a lot better than that one. The mud's a little bit less. Let me go blow that out. I'm not going to go crazy on this because we're not. it's not like we're trying to get this ready to run in a car. We're just trying to do an assessment. Let's see what an air gun. I want to see. Enough. We're just looking to see if that accelerator pump works. So I want to cover that hole and then work the throttle. Yeah. Nope. I don't really want to put a carb kit in one of these either. Blowing back through it. I got bubbles coming through. Nope. Dead. Alright, so I put it back together. Carbs just thrown together. The floats, I didn't even bother putting a float in it. Um, none of that's doing anything anyway. I have a feeling this engine was overheated and that's why the, all the valves were loose and it may also be the fact that the uh, compression might be leaking out of the cylinder heads. So what happens, it overheated and the heads became loose because of it. And it might be leaking out of that, but again, we're still going to try to move forward and see if it'll run. And then we'll try to do a recompression test. It's got a multitude of problems with it, but again, we're just here to do an assessment. Where is my crappy screwdriver hiding? In the tray full of gas. It's a good thing to spark it with. All right, let's see. You're going to need choke. Let me throttle up. I don't know why I'm th pumping it. I'll just give her some raw fuel. I bolted the other J tube on just so all the fire at least shoot out this direction and not back towards where my puddle of gas is. <laughs> all right, what are we doing? We're gonna go crank her again and see if it can go. Maybe. No ground.
Let it cool down. Taste it. Ah, oh, it was like there. <laughs> one more squirt, one more try. Maybe we'll try talking the heads. <laughs> she runs. All right, we'll let that cool down some and try filling it up. See if we can get it to run one more time and uh, maybe we'll retorque the heads and do a compression test again. Let's go. Try it again. Week. And that's the one I think that has 40 pounds in it. Okay, I'm gonna go for one more time. I'm gonna try closing the choke and see if it'll draw from the carburetor. Burn paint off. That's all. Not on fire. <laughs> Just burn the paint off that uh, header. So I am going to 
pull the plugs back out of it. We'll do a compression test one more time to see if the numbers came up. So number one cylinder went from 85 pounds to 105 pounds. That's very good. Let's see. It sounded like it was running on all four too, so. That's 110. So it went from 75 to 110. Excellent. Hopefully that maintains the other two. Yeah, it says you just need to spin a little bit and it brought, came right back up. So 85 to 105, 75 to 110, 40 came back at 105, and 80 went up to 100. And probably if it runs a little bit more, it will get even a little bit better. So I'm happy with that. We got a good, you know, compression anyway. You see what they ran on all four. A couple things I'm just going to double check. I'm going to go put a test light on the oil pressure switch. Make sure the oil light stays out at an idle when we go to fire it up or even just if we crank it. The light goes out and we'll probably check end play on it. We'll set up a dial indicator and uh, see if we can get some end play and get a look at how sloppy the bottom end is, if it is. I'm trying to get it to focus on that gauge. It keeps wanting to focus on the pipe in front of it. But right now, those are 5,000 increments on that indicator. I'm going to rock the crank forward and back. And hopefully the camera's picking it up. You can see it's moving about, about 5,000 it looks like. I think the spec is 12. I think nominal you want to set it up for is around seven. So that's good. That What that is is how sloppy the crank is from uh, front to back. And a lot of times the wear actually happens more on standards than automatics because when every time you push the clutch down, you're pushing against the pressure plate with the uh, throw out bearing with your clutch and when you do that you're actually just preloading that whole crankshaft to one side so it's actually kind of better if you're parked or you know at a light or something you pop it in neutral take your foot off the clutch it kind of wears on the bottom end but this looks pretty good the reason why i said it possibly ran hot there's a couple of things I'm, I'm not that crazy about i'm not a big fan of those external oil coolers uh, a couple of things reasons why well first for one normally there's an oil cooler inside here you can see the it's actually screwed to the base of it but it looks like a radiator a fat square radiator air gets kicked out from the fan and blows out across that on the factory oil cooler well instead they tapped onto that and ran that oil cooler over there but the problem is it's kind of cutting off some of the airflow of the intake for the fan so that's one issue that and the other issue is if you were to put this in a bug or any uh, a bus the firewall is right here so there's no airflow going to be able to get through those fins really so in a dune buggy yeah kind of sort of i'm still not all that big of a fan even in a dune buggy that and the fact that it probably was in a dune buggy looking by the fact of that and the exhaust and these hoses would be up in the way the cooling tins are not set up correctly what happens is when you're sitting at an idle it has a tendency for the exhaust heat to come up, rise up, come back into the fan and keep circulating the same hot air all the way around. But when it's in a car, this is all sealed off. You can't see any of this. So it has to draw air through vents that are up here, either in a bug or a bus, and allows cold air to come in, down and through. Having said that, part of the indication is you look at the end of the plug wires, you can see how the ends of the boots are all kind of heated up and burned up. That's another reason why I was saying that. All right, so we're gonna see if the oil pressure goes out I'm not going to bother trying to start it, at least yet. Right now, the test light, one end's hooked to the positive of the uh, jumper pack, and the other one was like, wherever I go and I touch ground, the light's going to light up. Well, the oil pressure switch kind of works that way, too. The switch goes to ground when there's no pressure. Essentially, is a, inside there's a, a diaphragm that moves off as oil pressure builds up, takes it away from ground, and um, keeps it off of there, keeps the light in your dash. It's the same as the light in your dash, and then if the oil pressure gets too low, say uh, I think it's seven pounds anything under seven pounds the light will come back on so we're gonna go crank it with the test light in there and just see if it'll spin with the plugs out fast enough to turn that light off do we lose it back on yeah well pressure's fine good 
So guys, that's gonna be about it for this guy. I think uh, I got the information out of it that I want to. I just wanna do a quick assessment on it. I'm not here to restore it or rebuild it. I just wanna know what I have in my inventory. So I have a 1600 dual port that seems to have good compression, good crank, and uh, oil pressure seems decent. So the long block seems fine. I'm not concerned about the carburetor, the fan, the oil cooler, exhaust, those kind of things. Um, that would be for when I would have a vehicle for it. I know I can have something to go tear into, or if I want to sell this, I can feel fairly confident in saying that, uh, you know, it uh, seems fairly decent. So with that, guys, thanks for kind of hanging out in the garage with me and uh, spending a little bit of time and doing some wrenching. Till the next one, later. How about a bonus cold start? Let's see how this one does. It's gonna snow tonight, so I'm gonna get in in the garage. better.